Hi, okay. this is this is Tino with Music You Can See. We're at Winter Nam, and I ran into a bass player that I have known about since I was a child, Phil Chan. I first saw you in 1979 on Rod Stewart's Do You Think I'm Sexy album, and yeah. the first music video I think I ever saw yeah. was Do You oh. Think I'm Sexy. Well, you're like yeah, yeah. 19 years old at the time? You were a youngster. No, no, I was older than that, yeah. but um, that we'll, we'll leave that for the next interview. Absolutely. So what you want? <laughs> so, so I what know, do you want to know? I'm standing next to somebody who's literally played on 50 gold records. I don't think I know anybody that I've ever met that can say that. Talk about your career. I know you Okay, would... well, first of all, I'm Jamaican. I grew up in Jamaica. And I, when I was growing up, I was... My shop, my dad had a shop, and it was beside a club. And the club at night time, they used to play the mentor music. And they played banjo. That is what I want to be, a banjo player. And I still do play the banjo. I'm one of the greatest banjo players for that type of music. Mentor, because it's in my blood. And, um, and I wanted to play on the beach, you know, like down the way where the nights are gay, all that, you know, the Harry Belafonte thing. That's, what, that's, that's in my heart. So I, anyway, I ended up, I don't know, become a rock god. <laughs> Because I got the Rock God Awards the other day with Lita Ford and, and um, Phil Susan and Frankie Bonelli. They gave me, the, I'm a Rock God. I know. Awesome. I, the only Rock I know is my pet rock. But anyway, so, anyway, I grew up in Jamaica and I, I, I listened to all that stuff. And one of the guys that really influenced me was um, Ernest Ranglin, a guitar, jazz guitarist. Oh, yeah. oh Montgomery. West Montgomery. West Montgomery. Love wow. Ernest. And Ernest, to me, did. The octave on the double octave, long before Wes. That's what Chris Blackwell said. Chris Blackwell is the head of, um, was the head of Island Record. He did My Boy Lollipop, remember that song? Ernest arranged it, that was the biggest, first Jamaica million seller that put Chris on the map, and then Chris went to form Island Record, and he had all these other people, Spencer Davis, um, all, the, all, the, all the rock guys, you know? Stevie Winwood and all those people. Uh, what's the name? Avalon. What's the name of the guy from Avalon? Um, um, Roxy Music. Roxy Music. Yes, um, all those. Uh, I we used to go down the Brian studio. Ferry. Yeah, Brian Ferry and all the things. So that started him. But anyway, so and then this, I grew up with the ska music. Ska? Yeah, you know ska music. Absolutely. Well, ska was the music that the Jamaican played. Um, a lot of the Jamaican musicians at that time were jazz musicians, but they couldn't make a living, so they end up playing pop, popular music. And they end up playing ska music, right? Um, and it was influenced by New Orleans music, Louis Jordan, Saturday Night Fish Fry, Wilbert Harrison, I'm going to Kansas City, uh, Kansas City, here I come. Uh, uh, uh. And then in the end, they started to, they have the local artists that write their own music, and when they run out of music, they use Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, uh, uh, you know. And then there was a great trombone player called Don Drummond. He went to, he went to see Meet Me in St. Louis mm -hmm. <laughs> with yes, Judy Garland. Absolutely. And he took the theme and he wrote a song on it. I became a big hit. So that is the Jamaican music with the, um, first it was the mentor music that the people, they have the rumba box uh -huh, uh -huh. and they, they um, the banjo and the thing and they sing and they sing all these down the way where the nights are gay and then the scatterlights came along the drummer took the the, the drumming the pokomanian music from the the slaves in the field in the in because they used to play the music to um speed up production and then you were uh, when you were a slave you weren't allowed to talk to each other but they would, yeah, but they were, these Jamaicans are smart. They would, they would, they would sing, they would say, oh, and they would play, boom, 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 Casey is interviewing me now, and Tina is going to buy me a beer. So, so that is how they, you know, that's yeah, how they, they did it. Yeah. So that, that music from the mentor went into the um, ska music from the 60, 63 to about 65. And it's called Scatterlight. Actually, Absolutely. Yeah. how the name came about, at that time they had the satellite. And then um, 
Nibzi, the ask Nibzi the drummer, why don't you uh, you know name the group? So he says to Roland Unfall, so, you know the sax player, because he read music. Roland said, but I don't read music. Uh, Roland, uh, Nibzi, Roland, you do it. You know, so Roland said, let's call it Satellite. And but Nibzi said, no, but we play ska, so let's call it Scatterlight. That's awesome. Isn't it uh, isn't amazing? And Ernest played in the early stuff, and then after that, the period went to rock steady music, where they slowed it down, you know, boom, do, 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 do. And then after that, um, the scare was, uh, uh, and then the rock said, chip it, it, and then, and then reggae came, and then Bob mixed it up, chick it, chick it. And, and the Bob, rest is now speaking of Jamaica, that, uh, you, you were honored in Jamaica a couple years ago, but, but you got to play on Bob, with Bob Marley. Talk a little bit. I No, I, I played with him live. Live, With got Jimmy it. Cliff and um, Johnny Nash, I think. Okay. And then two years ago, uh, you went back to Jamaica, and they yeah. honored you as one of their major... Out of this thing. I don't know if it means out of this thing or old dog. I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure it out. But, well, you know, I'm the only Jamaican Chinese. That when I was growing up, um, I grew up um, listening to that type of music, and I'm the only Jamaican Chinese that, as I said, jumped the fence. Right. Because I'd already played all the reggae stuff and so on, so on. And I was very curious to go into the rock and roll arena. So in 1964, I went to London to promote ska music. And then the band broke up. You took ska to Europe? Yes. You're the one that took it to the specials and to, uh, yeah. to Madness? Yeah, you talking to the man. Are you serious? That, Would I wow. lie to you, honey? No, absolutely <laughs> not. So because of you, we got the specials. Yeah. We got Madness. Bad Manners and all those Bad people. Bad Manners, yeah. the Linval, Beat. Thomas and all those guys. The and, Beat. And who else was I met food, I met uh, Zebby. You know, all those guys, you know? Right. Um, it was, wasn't as good. Steel Pulse and all the things. Still you pulse. see, what happened? Jamaica was under British rule. Oh, that's right. We were Spanish, and then we were under British Colonized, rule. Colonized, right. But the English think they were smart, because they said, oh, you're not British, we're coming to take away your sugar and all the things. That means you have to give us, a, you have to give us British passport. Ah, so you got the British, that's how you got to, so you went to, you got to go to England first. Yeah, and a British passport, I, I have it somewhere. But, wow. So, wow. because if you, if you take a country and say it is British, then you have to give them British passport. So all, so a lot of the Jamaican went there, they went as clippies or they went as nurses. I don't know, you know what a clippy is, somebody goes on the bus and they clip. That, you know, on the tickets. Got it, got And they it. go as, Flip. the ladies them will end up as nurses. So we went there, we invaded them with that, and we took our music with it. Oh, so awesome. Nice. So we took the ska music and all that stuff, and then that just where it influenced, um, you know, specials and all, UB40 and all those UB40, people. UB40, yeah. special. Oh, by the way, you know, UB40, um, yeah. Red Red Wine. Yeah, absolutely. I did the original Red Red Wine by Tony Tribe that was copied by UB40. Got it. So it was a cover I played that bass UB40. and guitar. That is their biggest hit yeah. and their only real big hit. I, yeah. I played bass and guitar on that. Wow. And, uh, and because when UB40 come, um, Michael Virtue, he's always called me. I said, Phil, you have to come. He said, I can't afford this. How many tickets you need? You know what I mean? Right. Wow. That's how it is, you know? And then, <laughs> so, so, you know, that. so I went there and then after that, I ended up, we used to play at the marquee. Marquee, and, right? Yeah, I'm going to tell you another story. This is all for the book, but you get in a little preview. There was a guy called Peter Meaden. He managed detours, or call it the high numbers. So it was taken over by Kit Lambert, the Who. Oh, the Who, wow. Yeah, so what happened? Peter Meaden used to manage the high numbers, and they kicked him out, and then Kit Lambert came in. So we knew, he knew Pete, and then Pete used to play at Marquee. So Pete got us to support the Who. Wow. And That's Roger it. Roger was playing with the Who at the time too? It oh yeah, yeah, the, the Who, lineup? Roger, okay. jo Roger yeah. John and Mooney. Oh, got it. And yeah. that's how I got to know uh, Brian, because when Brian played the drums, I said, you're just like Mooney. Wow. You splatter all over the place, but you're on time. And I thought, 
I saw actually I saw the who when they were here on um, Zacho's plane. You know, I said you're the perfect person because I've seen other drummers with the who, but I saw the guy Mooney, and Zach said to me, "Oh, Phil, you mean something you can't get out of a book." He was splattering, but he was just like Mooney, and that was the who. Ended up working with Pete. I think I did some of the, the demos for his the who song, and then um, I did his solo album and then I did Tommy. Uh, I the, how did uh, Rod, so Rod found you in London? Well, well, I was in London and Rod had called me to, I was with Robbie, well what happened? So you knew Robbie way back then too? Yeah, yeah, well what happened, um, Jim died. Right. And then they were reforming a group, so it was Ray, um, John and Robbie, so they went to London to try to get a group together, you know? So anyway, so I think they got Jess Roden and Jess, Jess recommended me. And then I recommended um, Roy Davis, the keyboard player, because he was in a group called Gonzalez. So, and then Ray had to come back because he, his wife was having a baby. And then we went to Jamaica to record with the Butts Band. So it was Robbie, um, you know, Robbie and John. Right. And that is the time when Thank God for Robbie. He took me to Jamaica to my dad for the last time. Oh my so I did gosh. owe him big time. So Robbie, wow, Robbie's so dear. What a dear, yeah, love dear Robbie. He's a great guy. He is. Great wow. songwriter. Uh, he wrote the biggest. He wrote the biggest <laughs> hit of the sixties. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Light my fire. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is. So we did that. We did, and then you know I ended up um, working. Jeff Beck. Uh, yeah, well, we, yeah. Jeff Beck was before. And then um, I, I, yeah, I did the London scene, and I ended up I did um, Jim Capaldi from Traffic. Oh, you did work with Traffic? Yeah, wow. he had a number one with it, Linda Lewis. We do a lot of sessions with Richard Bailey, the drummer. But Richard, when we started with Carmine. Or in a piece. Yeah, but. Who you were supposed to play? Well. We went to the Blow by Blow, but his dog died, and he had to come back to LA. Right. <laughs> so, so we got Richard. Because we used to play at a club called, we used to play at the club, the group called Gonzalez. Gonzalez. And Richard was the drummer. Richard was about 17, 18 from Trinidad. But we had the chemistry. Yeah, the good. Uh, yeah, because when he comes with us, did, you know. So we did a, we did a, we did a um, blow by blow. We did a lot of sessions with, um, with Richard. Richard and Max. And another guitarist called Crackle. So um, we did all that stuff. And then Rod knew about me. but. He wanted me when I was in Jamaica. He sent me a telegram. Those days we didn't have text, right? And I said, I said, um, Rod, sorry, I can't. I have one more week with Robbie and I can't break the contract. But I'm very anal when it comes to my word. So anyway, I came out. So they got Ted Sue, the other bass player. And I think they got, he was good, but he was a drinker and they loved that because he was always drunk. <laughs> I was like, you know, you know, from um, the faces. They were Faces, always oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. great group, but they were always drunk and it worked. It worked. So yeah. anyway, it wasn't until, you know, after when Rod went solo, they hooked up again. So last time I saw you perform was uh, January of last year, January 15th yeah. at the Whiskey A Go Go, yeah. uh, 2017. And uh, I tried to catch you when you came out during the set upstairs where I was standing by the sound. Oh, you're trying to pick my wallet. No, I just <laughs> wanted to shake your hand because I've, I've known about you since I was a child. Yeah. And uh, today I finally get to meet you at NAMM and uh, man, it's such an honor. And uh, No, I, no, well, you know what, all, all my life, my dad, my dad and my mom, they were very supportive of me. And my dad, we had a shop in Jamaica and we used to work in the shop and he, um, he was a master calligraphy. Calligraphy, artist, oh, wow. Yeah. And he wrote a, a calligraphy, which I took with me all the time. He says, master your music, your future is immeasurable. And I've never forgotten that. When I go on stage with Robbie, on Ray, the doors, it's not the doors, it's the Phil Chen show. Uh, Bonza thing. It wasn't Bonza, man. It's the Phil Chen show. I own the stage. You own the that's stage. Awesome. And you and definitely that's, do. And that's, well, that's the only way to do it. You and know? you're making your home in L.A. now? Yeah, I've been here for years. Awesome. <laughs> well, Phil, it's been okay. an honor. I finally get to meet you. We're at Winter Nam. Phil Chen, one of the best bass players that I've ever got to ch chat with. 
50 gold records says it all. Yeah, um, yeah, please send me a copy.